some point we got a call from the Alarian family and they said, we want to do something about this. We like what you're doing. Come on down and join our coalition. And they put together a coalition and that evolved into the National Coalition to Protect Civil Freedoms. And because the Alarian family has been such an integral part of our understanding of how these cases have evolved and what our role in all of this is, that I really wanted uh, Nahal to come up and just talk a little bit about that experience. Well, I feel so honored to be here in the company of my fellow sis sisters and brothers uh, in the struggle for justice. And I feel when I listen to the stories of some of you that my pain and suffering is nothing compared to yours. <coughs> and uh, like, who am I to come here and talk to you about my experience? But maybe through talking to each other, we can find, inshallah, some hope in, in you know, finding justice for all of us. So what happened is that in 2003, my husband, Dr. Sami Alarian, was arrested by the government, by the FBI, uh, very early in the morning, and he was taken to jail, and uh, you know he was charged with terrorism charges, so many, like 17, I think. So anyway, that was not really the beginning of our suffering, of our struggle for justice. It started long time before that. In 97, 1997, my own brother, Mazin, Dr. Mazin al Najjar, who was living in Tampa, Florida, was arrested by the immigration officers, taken to the FBI uh, building, and he was offered a job, he was offered uh, citizenship, everything he needed, if he testified against my husband. And when he refused to do that, to, when he refused to be, uh, you know, to, to, he said, I have nothing against this man. He is an honorable man, and I have nothing to talk about him, nothing bad, you know. So what did they do? They charged, or they kept him imprisoned under the use of secret evidence. That time, they called it classified information or evidence. We are the ones who coined this as secret evidence. We started, I remember that time, you know, my kids were young, but my brother was in jail. I, we have to do something, all of us, Sammy and I, and uh, members of our community, and even lawyers and uh, peace activists, and the group became larger and larger every day with new members who really cared about justice. How could the American government that talks about freedom all over the world comes here imprisons people without telling them why they were imprisoned. Well, what is secret evidence? It's evidence that keeps you imprisoned without even you have the right to confront it. This is crazy, it's horrible, so inhumane. So that's what we started in Tampa doing. We established Tampa Bay Coalition for Justice and Freedom, uh, uh, for, for justice and peace. <laughs> and uh, we, every week we, we met together, you know, the, the members of the coalition to discuss what to do with Mazin's case. So what did we do? We tried to educate our own community, first of all. So we held so many uh, lectures and symposiums. We invited uh, members of our society from all kinds of fields, like Congress people, like, uh, you know, even uh, lawyers, um, journalists who came and talked about America and the freedoms in America and you know, what's wrong, what's right, what we should do about it. And I remember that time I was in charge of communicating with so many journalists and reporters. And I did that, I was really persistent. I called a, a columnist many, many times, left him messages until he responded. And I said to him, my brother is imprisoned under the use of secret evidence. You have to meet with us. You have to talk to us and we will discuss with you what's going on and it's not fair. So the guy at last said, okay, come. When we came and we finished talking to him, he said, thank you for your persistence. I'm going to write about it. We managed to make a lot of columnists and um, editors write you know, editorials and columns about my brother's case. And that's on one side. Second thing we did was, of course, lobbying in Congress. And this did not happen uh, 
easily. But we found uh, some Congress people who are good and they cared about justice. So th we invited them to come and talk to Mazin, even in jail, to visit Mazin. One of them, Representative uh, David Bonnier, came. He was even a Michigan representative, not from our area at all. But he came all the way to Florida, and uh, the media, of course, covered his visit. So, I mean, we started by inviting Congress people, even donating to them, uh, holding um, fundraisers for them. Until little by little, a lot of them, you know, uh, came into our support, and they even held. I remember uh, uh, Representative Henry Hyde of Michigan, the head of the Judiciary Committee that time. He held two testimonies in Congress, and I gave my testimonies there on the use of secret evidence. And you know who the other side was? Only, unfortunately, the Jewish uh, organizations here that defended the use of. Uh, of secret evidence against Muslims and Arabs that time. Even the government did not bring any uh, person to give testimony on its behalf. So anyway, uh, what happened was that later on, after years of work, we managed to even have a, you know, a, a project of a bill that was uh, passed by the Judiciary Committee and was, we were working also in the Senate until September 11th took place, and of course all our efforts were gone, and the government went crazier even than before. So the point is that with my brother's case, we saw a lot of success. Don't forget that in 2000, he was released by Janet Reno that time because of all the efforts that were was done or were done by us, by the journalists who wrote about him by the Congress people, you know. So that's why I believe that we can work and work and work and struggle until we find some solution for our causes here now. It's not, I don't think it's the end of the road. We can do a lot, inshallah. Then 2003 came, as I told you, my husband was arrested. The community was terrorized. They talked about, you know, what's his name? Rumsfeld talked about the shock and awe policy in Iraq. No, it took place in Tampa too. You know that was really the, the you know the policy that scared the Muslim community. We were uh, terrorized when our home was searched very early in the morning. Sammy was arrested in a horrible way. You know he was taken, and the uh, media was waiting as if you know they just heard about it. Of course, the FBI told them. You know before, long before the, the arrest took place. They told the media so that they can even scare everyone more and more. So anyway, when <coughs> Sammy was arrested, the community, of course, abandoned us. But I cannot really uh, deny also that there are members of the community that at least secretly supported us and donated to our legal fund. How, you know, how did we do it? It's with their help. So I understand, as Mel told me that time, she said, Nahla, the community is rightly scared because of all the scare tactics. But we are here for you. We are the ones that are not under attack. And that's our role now, to come in your defense and to, to be outspoken for you. And that I will never forget when our brothers and sisters in the community let us down, but God sent us even better people, better friends who were there for us. Mel, you know, did not leave me for one day. Every day she would call me. She was, she was my therapist. She really took good care of me, you know, psychologically. I was going crazy, of course. My kids and I were shouting at each other. We didn't know how to behave, how to, uh, how to treat each other, or handle, like, everyday uh, things, you know. I went, I took them to the psychologist. And the psychologist said, of course, they took the father, who is like the structure of the house or the base of the house. And now the home has no structure. It's collapsing. And what are you going to do? Learn how to deal with each other little by little. The normal chores we used to do, like everyone knew what to do. For, we forgot everything, you know, how to do things together, how to do things individually even. We had to learn little by little how to deal with each other. And the most important thing is that we, I did not allow my kids for one day to lose faith in their father or in the justness of his court. 
He didn't do anything wrong. He was fighting for the freedom and for the just uh, cause of Palestine, and we didn't break any law. And the government, if they didn't like what we were doing, it's our right. And we came here to this country, to the land of the free, because we believe the propaganda that it's, there is really freedom here, you know? So the, the most important thing is that the kids need to be assured that, you know, their, the, their fathers, their <coughs> brothers, anyone, any relative, that they, they did not do anything wrong. They should always hold their heads high, you know, and from that they should do something about it because look at those who are not even related to us and they are doing a lot for us. Look at Mel, look at, uh, you know, Steve, Fred. There are so many, and Lynn, so many people who believe in our causes and they are really, you know, spending a lot of time and effort to help us and defend us. We have to also do something about it. We cannot just sit quietly and, and give up and be lazy and, you know, no, we have a cause and we have to do everything we can to fight and fight and fight. And remember, you're not the only ones who went through this. The African American community went through hell. And before that, also the Native Americans and the Italians afterwards, everybody, every new community in America is, that is weak and powerless, they went through what we are going through. And they had to struggle and fight back. And that's what we have to do. We cannot just, as I said, give in. God gave us this life to struggle for justice, to do what is right. And this is the real test. Yes, we are being tested, and it's not easy. But look at the reward. It's not in this life, but the life hereafter, God willing, you know? And second thing is that those who did injustice to us, also we will find punishment, if not in this life, in the life hereafter. So hope is what keeps us going. This is very important, hope in the justness of God. God is fair and just, and he will not let us down. He wants us to work hard. He wants us to fight back, and we will do our best. And yeah. you know what I want you to do also is to reach out as much as you can to the non-Muslim community. These are your brothers and sisters, and there are so many good people out there. And never forget those journalists that we met in our trial. Even now, after all these years, they are still our friends. And they care about us, and they come and visit as friends, not as reporters or journalists. Just to try to write to a, a good columnist, you know, you have to read the newspapers in your area. You have to see which ones who really have a conscience, who is fair-minded, and go and meet him or her. And try to talk uh, about your cause and uh, about your imprisoned uh, loved ones. You, and you have to keep the cause alive. You cannot just sleep on it. You know, this is very, very important. <coughs> I don't know, Layla. <laughs> if Layla can remind me of some other things. But uh, that's why also this coalition was established. My husband got out of jail under house arrest. He is now. But he didn't forget about his fellow prisoners. And he wanted to do something, you know, with, of course, you know, all the great work Brother Steve is doing and everyone else. And the objective of this coalition is to keep the struggle alive and to even do more and more and reach out, as I said, for other people, other organizations, anyone who wants to help, let's look for those people. Don't sit down and wait for them to come to you. You know, the coalition, inshallah, God willing, will grow even larger and larger and will be much stronger. And one of the objectives of the coalition is also to lobby, inshallah. Mm -hmm. Lobbying is yeah. very, very important. Yeah. And we can do wonderful things in the Congress. There are good people there. Not all of them are bad and corrupt and this and that. No, there are good people who have a conscience. We have to focus on that too. And inshallah, there will be... Uh, as I said, you know, a, a resolution to our problems, little by little, and we will be stronger. Thank you.